going to open up a console window and learn some basic Linux commands. When we open up the console, it's important to understand that all console commands are actually run from a particular directory. So you don't just bring up a generic console and run it from nowhere. It's actually running from some particular file directory somewhere. When we open up a console window, by default, it's going to go to your home directory. So your home directory has this special notation here um, given by the tilde sign. That means we're in our home directory. In Linux, there are really two directories that you need to learn first when you're just first starting out. The first is your root directory, and that's the highest level um, folder on your entire system. So all the other system files for the operating system and your user files and all that stuff, they all go into some, some subdirectory that's within your root directory. So the root directory is generally where you need to go to manipulate system files if you want to customize your system or uh, it's where um, if you like install programs using apt-get, that's where a lot of the files are going to go in certain subdirectories there. The second most important directory is your home folder. And that's the base directory for whatever user account you're logged in. So on the Raspberry Pi, we're logged in as the user Pi. So that's why it says Pi at Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi is the network name for my computer. Uh, in other words, uh, we're running a Raspberry Pi and it's named aptly Raspberry Pi. And then Pi is the user that we're logged in uh, as. So right now we are in the home directory, logged in as the user Pi on the computer Raspberry Pi. So once we're in this directory, um, we can actually look at different files using the ls command. So ls command is really just going to list everything that's in our current directory. So if I hit ls, that'll show me all the files that are in this directory. And we can see we have the CSC 2100 folder uh, that we set up earlier when we ran the first video. Basically, we checked that out from GitHub. Another command that's useful is pwd, that's print working directory. So if I hit pwd, that's going to show me the uh, file path to the current directory that I'm in. And in this case, it's home slash pi. So I was talking about there being really two important directories, the first being the root directory and the second being your home directory. If I want to go to the root directory or if I want to change directories at all, I would use the CD command for change directory. So let's say we want to go to our root directory and list all the files there. Again, the root directory is the highest level uh, directory in the entire file structure. So if I go CD and then I enter a slash here, that's basically telling me that I want to go to a, a file directory that's just the slash. So it's the lowest level that there is. So root always just has a, a single slash there. So if I CD to the um, backslash, or in other words, the root directory, I should now be in the actual root directory itself after issuing that command. So now that I'm in root, I can show all the files and I do that by hitting LS again. And then this will show all the files and folders that are within the root directory. Um, I can also do pwd again, print working directory, and that shows me that I'm in just the um, slash directory there, which is root. So basically this is the, um, the highest level that we can possibly go in the uh, file system, and every other folder on our computer is going to be a subfolder within this root folder. So now that we're in the root directory, you'll notice when we run the ls command that we see a home folder. Home folder is one of the folders that Linux creates uh, by default along with se several of these other folders in here, um, but that's where all of our user files are gonna go. So every user that has an account on this system will have their own folder within the home directory. So if I CD to home and then LS, I have a folder in there called Pi, and that's the uh, home folder for the user Pi that we're logged in as. So I can go back to, I can go back to that directory, CD to Pi, and then pwd, print working directory. I'm in the folder home slash pi, so that's the full uh, directory path there. And then I can hit ls, and then that will show me the files again from this directory that we uh, printed out earlier. Additionally, I can return to the home directory for the account that I'm currently logged in as using cd and then tilde. Since tilde is a special character that means home directory, I can treat it just like it was a full file path. So if I hit pwd here, it shows that I'm in the home directory, home slash pi. Now suppose I want to create a folder in the directory where my console is currently running. I can do that using the make directory command, mkdir. And let's say I want to just make a folder called test folder. After this is executed, we should have a folder in our directory now called test folder. So additionally, instead of just giving a folder name, I can give it a, a path to a new file or a new folder um, that's going to be somewhere else. So let's say that I want to create a new folder called test within the test folder that I just created. 
So I can do that by saying mkdir test folder, and then I'll make a new folder just called test. Now that this is done, I should be able to cd into that directory. I'm just going to go into test folder, and then when I run ls, I see that there is a folder in there called test. So you don't have to just give a, you don't have to change directory into the directory where you want to actually create the folder. You can just give a full path name there when you run the mkdir command. And most Linux commands work this way. You can give a full file path when you actually want to uh, create or delete some folder or some file somewhere. So if I want to return back to my home directory, I can do cd and then tilde. That'll go to my home directory, which I can verify by running pwd again. If I run ls, I see that I have the test folder there. And now let's say that I want to delete that folder because it was just a test. To delete a folder and, or a file in Linux, you can use the rm command for remove. And if you're deleting a folder and you want to delete all the folder content, contents, you need to pass a command line argument to this rm uh, command, and that's rf for recursive. What that means is that it will recursively go through the folder that you're targeting to delete, and it will delete all the files and folders within that folder. If you don't add this rf parameter, then you're going to get an error because it, it won't by default attempt to delete the contents of a folder. So we'll go ahead and do it the wrong way just to illustrate. So I'm going to delete test folder, and it's saying that it can't remove it because it's a directory. Uh, basically, that's because within test folder, um, well, number one, it's a directory, but number two, there are contents within that folder that we can't just uh, directly de delete through this command without the rf flag. So if I run rm slash rf and then test folder, it'll delete the entire folder and its contents successfully. So now if I run ls again, we can see that test folder has been deleted successfully. Now we're going to try copying using the cp command. So first I'm going to open up a text document here, and I'm just going to create a new text file arbitrarily. And I'm going to save this file uh, into my home folder, and I'm just going to call it text.txt. So when I run the ls command, I can see that test.txt has been created. And now let's say that I want to copy this folder um, to a new folder. So we'll go ahead and make a new folder using mkdir again. And we'll call it test directory again. Now if I want to copy test.txt to the new test directory that I've made, I can do that using the cp command. And it has the form of uh, cp and then source and then destination. So cp is command then the source is going to be test.txt. And then the destination that I want to make is going to be in test directory. And I'm going to make a new a copy of that folder, and I'm also going to name it uh, test.txt. So I'll keep the name the same. Once this has been executed, then I should be able to go into test directory. Oops. I'll cd into test directory, and then I should have test.txt. Now let's say that I want to actually print the contents of a, that file to see what they actually look like. So we have a, test doc, a text document and we want to print the text to the console. I can, use that using, I can do that using the cat command. So you can see it has test text, which is what we entered into that document. So the cat command is useful when you want to print the contents of a document to the console. Now we're going to learn a few commands that are useful for reporting on the status of our system, like getting the IP address, uh, how much file storage we have left, the version of our operating system, etc. So first of all, the df command is useful when we want to see how much disk space we have uh, available. So when we run df, this will show us, show us all the partitions on our system. It will show us how much uh, data is available and currently in use. Slash dev slash root is the uh, root partition for this particular file system. So this will basically give you uh, an overview of the entire disk. So we have used um, about 6.9 gigabytes and we have available about 20 gigabytes. Uh, the total disk size is about 28 or 29 gigabytes or so. Um, so we've used about 26%. So this is useful when you want to see how much disk storage you have um, on all of your available partitions. Uh, the second command that we'll look at is if config. And this gives us information um, about the IP address of our machine. So I'm going to run this one more time. So when we look at this, this will show us uh, all of the available uh, network adapters that we have. So ETH0 is Ethernet0. That's going to be um, your physical cable that you have. WLAN0 is going to be Wi-Fi0 or Wireless LAN0. 
So that's going to be the um, the Wi-Fi adapter that we have. And then low, LO, is uh, always included by default. This is your local loopback interface. So basically, this isn't um, a network uh, interface you'd actually practically use, but it's there because if you want to send messages um, from one process to the other um, on the same system without going through the network, you could use this particular interface. So this one is uh, included with pretty much all Linux systems, whether or not they actually... Um, have an ethernet adapter on them or Wi-Fi or any internet connectivity at all whatsoever. So if config will give us um, all the available adapters and their IP addresses. So we can see here on ETH0, um, this is what I'm currently using on the, the ethernet. Uh, this is our IP address, 192.168.1.141. So this is really useful when I need to get IP addresses on my system. The next command that we're going to use is uname. Uname is useful when you want to figure out what version of your operating system you're currently running. So if you run Uname by itself with no arguments, it's just going to tell you that you're running Linux, which we already knew and isn't really that useful. But if we give it the dash A flag, that tells it to return all of the information it has about the operating system. So when we run that, we get a much uh, better description here. And we can see that we're running version 4.4.11-v7. That's very useful if you need to install certain pieces of hardware or certain pieces of software uh, that may or may not work with certain versions of Linux. We can also use the date command to get the current system time. This is useful if you want to check to see if your clock is updated with the uh, real world time. If it's not, then you can have problems when you access certain web or network services. So it's important to check this every now and then just to make sure that everything is synchronized. Another useful command is history, which will so show us all the commands that we've run um, during this console session. So this will basically give you a historical overview of all the commands that you've run. Uh, in case you ran something earlier and you can't remember what it was, you can double check and see what it was here. So now we're going to talk a little bit about the apt-get package manager for Linux. apt-get is a piece of software that allows us to install other pieces of software automatically instead of having to download a binary distribution and install it. So if you're familiar with Windows, the way it generally works is you go and you download an executable or an MSI file and you double click on it and that brings up an installer and that installs the software on your system. And you have to make sure that you download the correct version for whatever version of Windows that you're running um, and so on. In Linux, apt-get actually goes and downloads whatever piece of software you want from an online repository and it checks to make sure that that version matches uh, whatever version of Linux that you're running. So before you use apt-get to install a piece of software, you first want to run sudo apt-get update. What this does is it goes and it refreshes all of the online sources that apt-get will query whenever you're trying to install some piece of software. Um, so occasionally these online links um, will change and uh, this will just basically go and refresh them so that your system has the most up-to-date uh, links for everything. Once that runs, then we're ready to actually install something. Um, so we're going to go ahead and try to install gedit on our, on our system. So I can do sudo apt-get install and then gedit. gedit is the name of the program that I want to install. It's just a text editor that's um, pretty convenient. So I can run that and then this will go online and find gedit and prepare it to install on my system. Now I already have it installed um, on this particular Raspberry Pi. Um, so this would be a good opportunity to show you how to uninstall software. So let's say that we wanted to uninstall gedit from the system. We would do sudo apt-get remove and then gedit. And then that will go and it'll start um, uninstalling gedit from my system. So it's going to ask me if I want to continue and it's going to say that after we run this, um, so much disk space will be freed up. So yes, I want it to go ahead and uninstall gedit. And then uh, we can watch this as it goes through the uninstallation process. So this will do a clean uninstallation. It won't leave any files on your system and um, you, know, you don't have to go and clean anything up when it's done. So now gedit has been removed from my system. Um, and now if I wanted to reinstall it, I can do apt-get install. So if I do sudo apt-get install gedit, this will reinstall gedit. So we can see here, um, it's going to take uh, some additional disk space to run this. We expect that because we're actually installing something. This will go online, it'll find gedit, and it'll go ahead and set it up. And when everything is all uh, ready, then it'll give you a message saying that everything was installed. So now that gedit is, in, gedit is installed, we can run it um, just by typing the gedit command. So this is a gedit window. Again, it's just a simple uh, text editor. Now that we've learned some basic Linux commands, I'm going to show you how to write a very simple script. 
Scripting is something that Linux allows us to do to put a whole bunch of Linux commands in a single file. And then we can execute that file and it'll go through there line by line and execute each command that we have on each line of the file. So to create a basic script, um, we need to bring up a text editor first. So I'm just gonna bring up a leaf pad or I could use gedit that we've already installed. So we'll go ahead and use gedit. So we installed gedit in a previous step. Um, so what I'm gonna do is start basically typing in uh, my scripting commands. So let's say that uh, we wanna write a very simple script that will print a couple of lines of text and then it'll execute um, a program that we have somewhere on our computer. So earlier we had um, that hello world example and that example is still um, in our home directory. So what I'm gonna do is uh, have this script print a message saying that I'm about to run a file, then I'm gonna run the program and then I'm gonna print a, a termination message so that we can execute this entire script from a single command line. So let's say um, we just wanna write some text to the screen on the, as the very first thing. So we'll do echo. So echo is a command that prints to the screen. And I'm just gonna put, um, this is the beginning of my script. Okay, so that's one Linux command there. Echo is the command, and then this is the text that I'm gonna pass to echo. Then let's say that I wanna run the hello world executable. So that is located in uh, my home directory. So I'll do tilde slash, and then it's in the CSE 2100 folder, and then it's in uh, hello world. And then the program is called hello world. So that line should actually run um, the program that I wanna run. And then I wanna print some text to uh, basically say that I'm done. So this is the end of the script. So this is the end of the script. So now my script is complete and I'm gonna save it. Um, so I'll just do control S just like you would with any other, uh, any other program. And so I'm just gonna call this script.sh. So sh is the uh, standard name that we give to um, script files. So now that the script has been saved, I can hit ls and that'll show me the script. And when I run a script, um, we do that with a command called sh. So I run sh and then I pass in script.sh and then that runs the script. So you can see here that it printed the first line. This is the beginning of my script. This is the output from the hello world executable. So this executable is actually uh, run already and it printed some console output. And then this was the last um, echo command that I had. This is the end of the script. So you can see here that um, with scripting, you can actually write you know, very powerful things. Um, we only had three very simple lines here to print out, uh, but scripts are used to automate processes and installations and things like that that normally would take uh, you know, tens, hundreds, maybe even thousands of uh, Linux commands to run. And finally, we can shut our Raspberry Pi down from the command line by issuing the shutdown command. So if I just run shutdown by itself, um, you need to be root, so we need to run sudo first. And then this will schedule the shutdown for some time in the future. But generally, you want to do a shutdown immediately. So to do a shutdown immediately, you just issue the shutdown command with a now flag or a now parameter that we pass in. And that will cause the system to shut down immediately.